Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you guys for joining us today on this channel. Today's video is gonna be short and simple. I'll be talking about processing drums. In particular, I'm gonna be experimenting with the Waves DBX 160. I was thinking about good drum compressors and I remember growing up reading the forums or running into people. Everyone says get a DBX compressor and there's different models and different types, but everyone kind of unanimously agree their speed works really well for hip hop and drums in particular. So this particular project in FL Studio 20 for Mac, I put together an old school hip hop vibe using an old school sound set of drums um, from Bruce Forat, who used to give drums to a lot of the famous producers that we know and love. So I was like, all right, well, if we start with those ingredients, maybe using the DBX compressor or just similar techniques would sound right and make more sense to why they would use it. So I'm gonna play this for you real quick. I'm gonna take you through the setup, how I route it to my mixer, and then we'll rock and roll from there. Real simple, right? So what I want to do with these particular tracks is highlight them all. I already have them color coded with a gradient. You can get to that from this little drop down box and do color selected gradient. And I do that so that when I mix these or send them to my mixer, I right click channel routing, start from this track and see everything in clear gradient. Now for this particular setup with the drums and everything, I want to bust everything to its own group. So the kick, to its own group, the snare, the hi-hat, or percussions, etc. So I already know what that is. I know only have three groups, and for a lot of old school sampled hip hop, you probably won't have more than that. So this is gonna be my kick bus, this is gonna be my snare bus, let's change the color real quick, and then we'll have a percussion bus as well, and then maybe I'll deal with the bass and stuff separately. So let's mute that and that, which are my samples and my bass line, and I think I have a few kicks. So you can kind of see these firing off all at the same time. I want to send all these tracks to their own buses, unselected from the master. And it's a rinse and repeat process. When you get used to your workflow in terms of what sounds you're going to be using a lot in this program, you probably just end up um, creating a template with this already set up. So everything else that's remaining can go to percussion, technically. So we'll go here, just run through it real quick. Now work my way backwards, make sure nothing's sent to the master. And if we mute these three groups, we shouldn't hear anything. So that was the first thing. Now what I'm gonna do is focus on this kick track and pull up the DBX on that. Now I have two kicks layered together. Back in the day, you would have to do that, especially with these kind of drum sounds. This particular tone gives it more pump, this one's more bottom. Cool, so on that, we're just going to DBX it. I'm going to use the mono version of this plugin on the drums. And as you can see, this needle, when it goes through gain reduction, it's going to be really fast, like instant. I'll go through the preset menu, see if they have anything that says bass drum, and it does. And what I'm going to adjust is just the threshold and probably only get a little bit reduction on it. Even without it compressing a whole lot or doing a lot of game reduction, it smacks really hard. I'm focused on the snare the same way. And before we pick any settings for that, let's just hear it, the snare by themselves. Let's turn this DBX on. Bypass it. It's way more forward. So let's put those together. Now with the percussions, I might want to pan these a little bit to give everything its own space. All right. And then on that percussion bus, I'm going to use the DBX as well. You probably want it under normal circumstances. There's other compressors that are good bus compressors, but I'm gonna use it just to keep the tonality across the board. I'm gonna use the stereo version since I did panning this time. And it's all kinds. So you got master bus on it, which sounds right. They don't have one called drum bus though. Bring out the noise, let's try that. 
That's actually not bad. Way louder than expected, but that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the sub back in. I'm gonna turn it all the way down and bring it in slow. So now the sub is just moving the kick, and guess what we're gonna put on that? Um, There is a bass synth or a big synth and bass guitar. Let's try bass guitar, that's their target. Everything is crazier with this. And then lastly, nothing special with the sample itself. I'm just going to find the level for it, bring it up, and add more stereo separation to it. Stereo separation wide. Now the drums are so strong that the chops sound like they're way in the background. So what I'm gonna do is create an additional bus for the sample. I'm gonna call this a parallel sample. I'm gonna feed this signal to this as well. It's kind of acting like a send. I'm gonna put the DBX on that. I'm gonna use mono, so it's gonna squeeze the sample. And then I'm gonna put it through a lot of a stress. It's like a master bus compressor. It has a small ratio, but I'm gonna stress it all the way up. Now I can mix this signal with it. Let's try big stuff. So it's almost like we're raising it from the ground when it's parallel. Without it. With it. Take the DBX off the drums. Raise. Everything is more raised than alive. Five frequency wise. And now I'm actually going to put a master bus compressor on it because it is peaking. But what's interesting about FL Studio, it actually sounds okay if it peaks into the red. A lot of our big songs have clipped drums, but you put a bus compressor on the master channel just to tame everything. And it kind of puts everybody in the same box. So let's see, we got master bus compressor setting two. It looks like these are linked together. So this is showing the output. I want to see gain change. Um, hopefully these are linked together. It is when it's on stereo instead of duo. And we should be fine. And I'm going to turn the noise up too. So I'm gonna to toggle it and I'm gonna see what collapses. Normally if it's too much compression, something will collapse like the snare and my ear focus point is going to be the snare. So let's see what happens. So when I turn it back on, the snare is gonna collapse. Lit. I 
like it. And that's without reverb, delay, and everything else that you would expect in that style of music. But that's just all DBX stuff. And it's almost like the compressor itself EQ'd everything. It's very strange. It's one of a kind when it comes to coloration of drums. And it's just one of those things where it feels more like our hip hop era from back in the day. Like if you're trying to do the Alchemist, Kanye West, those style of beats from the early 2000s. I think this DBX compressor is right on the money. Um, and you can get it from Waves, of course. I believe it's on sale still. And as they said, hey, it's a one trick pony, but it performs that trick almost perfectly. And that trick is drums, in our context, hip hop drums. So hopefully you guys are interested in that kind of workflow and understanding how to split up your tracks in FL Studios Mixer and also how to route and bust things together so each thing has its own fader so that you can compress all the elements at once. But I thank you guys for joining us on the Machine Masters channel. I'm MG The Future. If you want to follow us on social media, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at MG The Future. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys. Hey, hey, hey.